Greetings. Uh, this is the N plus one -th attempt to get this video videoted, recorded, whatever. I'm, I'm being a videot. <laughs> I can't get my video to run. Um, my name is Jean and I am a knitter. And I'm learning how to deal with this video stuff. Someone asked if I would talk about the reference books that I would recommend when learning how to design knitwear. And I went off on this long rant, but absolutely did not notice that I had accidentally bumped the toggle and stopped recording as I was chasing after Little Man. And now you're going to get the short and sweet version because I'm not going through it all over, over again. Start by learning how garments go together and learn how to measure a human body to make a pattern and reference books like this. Oh dear, am I covering something critical? This is the Pattern Making Primer. Um, it's uh, 25 something dollars by Joe Barnfield and Andrew Richards. It contains some very clear, very good discussions and includes some complicated things that you probably won't need, but it's a good basic reference book. Um, for example, this is Purple Fluffy. This is my own design for my own body. Years ago, um, I got a knitting machine, learned how to measure a person for a bespoke garment. And I learned things like you need to measure both arms if you're making a bespoke garment. This, my right arm, is one inch shorter than my left arm. It's easy for me to remember that because if I make my sleeves exactly the same length, they do this and I can see my watch. <laughs> you will notice these sleeves come down to my wrist bone, both of them. This one's about an inch and a half longer than this one because of the way things wiggle and my watch gets in the way, etc., etc. I know this. I also know that my shoulder drop <clears throat> there will be editing happening. He's escaped. I also know that my shoulder drop is lower than that of most people because my shoulders are very square and they're also a little broader than the standard person, my height, weight, sex, by birth, etc. By the way, my pronouns are she, her, and they always have been and they probably always will be, but that does not mean that your pronouns are in any way, shape, or form wrong because they're yours. They're not mine. <laughs> Let me know what they are. I will try my best to use them, Jax. I want to repeat my apology for misgendering you in an earlier video. I warned you that the they, them pronouns are the absolute hardest ones for me to remember to use. And I even mentally practiced using them before I started recording and I still blew it. Sorry. And that's a sincere apology and not some weird spoof. Um, what am I working on? Well, I finished Fuzzy Purple. It fits exactly the way I want it to. It has the comfortable amount of ease. No, I didn't block it because I wasn't raised to block anything in acrylic. Um, our general rule of thumb was if you really want it to look good, hit it with some, you know, throw it in water and lay it flat to dry. But it's not going to change shape or size unless you melt it. And thank you, no, I'd rather not melt my acrylics. What am I working on? <laughs> 
My big shawl went into time out because I was having difficulty seeing the pattern. My new glasses have arrived, but I am currently working on... <laughs> this is a muscle burr hat. Well, when you start a muscle burr hat, it starts with a very small number of stitches and you have to knit circular and some people are just like really not thrilled with this, but it does increase very quickly. And then you can move it to circular needles and it curls and all I can say is, I'm a female. I remember what a diaphragm used to look like. I'm knitting a fluffy, woolly diaphragm. <laughs> and it's not going to be very effective. But that's all I can think of when I pick it up. And it makes me laugh. And yes, I'm knitting, and I'm knitting kind of slowly on it because there's all kinds of stuff going on because we're... Still moving into this house. So the muscle bar hat, at this stage, is a woolly diaphragm. And I think I'm one of the few people that will talk about it. But I'm not the only person who is thinking of it. It's a diaphragm. <laughs> it's going to be a cute hat when it's done. And yes, I will block it on a balloon. And it will be fine. But right now, all I can think of is birth control. <laughs> New and exciting things in my life. Um, I dug through my books of knitting patterns and found an entire collection on Scandinavian knit sweaters, some of which my mother had purchased for 50 cents some of which my older sister had purchased for somewhere around $1.50, and I purchased for $3 because we each needed our own copy because we didn't live in the same house. Well, that just cracks me up because some of those classics really have been around forever. Yes, when you knit them, they're not going to look modern. They're going to look dated, but... Part of that is in little things like the length of the ribbing. If you adjust that, you can update it. People's hands haven't changed shape. Not really. So if I am knitting a glove and the glove fits my hand, it can't be dated. What can be dated can be the color and basically, it's the length of the ribbing on the cuff. If it fits, it fits. I have pattern books that were available for sale for $3 and contain 10 different patterns. But they're not really 10 different patterns because it's 10 different charts. If you really look at the pattern, the pattern is the same. And there's not a lot of size inclusivity. One of them says, you can knit this pattern for children if you just knit it on really tiny needles and use 30% of the thread, the yarn, and work it in a fingering on a one and three instead of a worsted on a nine and 11 or eight and 10 or whatever it is that they were recommending. They just said, use smaller needles. It'll come out right for a kid. <laughs> and there's this whole different opinion on size inclusivity. The patterns also include washing directions. Um, I had totally forgotten the product Woolite. They said Lux, they said Woolite, they said detergent is harsher than soap. Soap makes suds, detergent doesn't. Remember that one? Um, but basically, there was none of this eucalyptus and special handling. It was just like, yeah, squish gently, rinse thoroughly, roll it up in a towel, lay flat to dry. <laughs> um, 
This was also, this was an interesting one. These patterns were written before steam irons were available. So if you wanted to steam something, you wet a cloth, laid the cloth down on top of it, and then gently touched the iron down on the wet cloth. And that would steam your object. I will tell you, that still works. And yes, that will still work to block something if you really want to. Pin it out, use steel pins so they don't rust. Lay a wet cloth on top of it, hot iron, gentle. And then they tell you to turn it over and do it to the other side. And yes, they're right, you will need to, but you know something, you're gonna need to pin it a second time. And then don't remove the pins until the object is completely dry. If when you remove the pins, the object springs into a shape you hadn't planned on, well, you probably didn't get it wet enough. Or you were working with acrylic and it just doesn't care. <laughs> this is not something you can do with silk yarns, but frankly, I'd be quite comfortable gently steaming anything, including acrylics, if I absolutely had to. But let me tell you, I'd rather mist them and pat them than use the hot iron on acrylic. If you don't pat, the water stays on the surface and doesn't go into the fibers. There's a reason you pat, but you could also beat it with a wooden spoon. <laughs> I've seen that video pop up a couple times and I think Roxanne is just amazing. I am impressed by her ability to educate knitters. Um, so we've talked about some designing, we've gone back over blocking, we've talked about the muscle burr diaphragm phase. <laughs> Which, I'm sorry, it just makes me laugh every time I think about it. Um, I had to put the blanket on top of my purple chair because when I first recorded it, all you could see was my face, hands, and my smile, and that's not it. By the way, if you can't tell these are new glasses, I got purple. The frames are metal, they're a little bit different. Um, I did get a second pair of glasses that has computer distance and close work. And when I looked at them, I was kind of depressed because they've gotten rather thick, which tells me my vision really isn't what it was when I was younger. But then again, I'm not the person I was when I was younger. So that's a good thing. There may be background noise, there may not be background noise. My husband is working from home this morning and I have to complete this by saying, the ball band on this yarn recommended I purchase six balls of yarn to complete an adult sweater. While I know I don't design size inclusively. This is a comfortable 40 odd inch chest. And my sleeves are significantly longer than standard. Um, many patterns will tell you knit till it's 17 inches. Yeah, knit till it's 24 inches, knit till it's 23 inches. That extra length is not added when there's only 30 stitches, that extra length is added up here. Did I worry also, <laughs> this is another one, I did not particularly worry about exactly duplicating the spacing on the increases that are almost impossible to see from this sleeve to this sleeve. Why? Well, first place, ain't nobody ever gonna notice. And in the second place, my arms don't match. Why should my sleeve increases match? I did get up to the same number of stitches. Eventually, this sleeve is the same diameter up here as this sleeve is. 
but they're not the same length. Neither are my arms, so that would be a win. I'm also going to tell you that if I were ever to do bust shaping, and I were one of those women who was a little bit different on the left than the right, then you notice the difference. I would probably not go to the trouble of adjusting my bust shaping to have it be different on the right than the left if I consistently wore a quality <clears throat> foundation garment. If there is a significant discrepancy, perhaps you've had a mastectomy. Um, then yes, I would go to the trouble of carefully adjusting the bust shaping for the right and the left sides, if it mattered to me, and if I were not wearing a prosthesis. Um, but do I adjust for the fact that yes, one shoulder is a half an inch higher than the other? No. Do I know it? Oh yeah, that's part of the measurements. Sometimes you adjust for things and sometimes you don't. The majority of commercially made garments, as a matter of fact, all commercially made garments are mirror imaged left and right. I will tell you that if you are careful in your measurements, you will find that there is not a single human on earth that is mirror imaged left and right. But nobody notices or most of the time you don't notice because it just doesn't matter. If it matters to you, like it matters to me, I do make one sleeve longer than the other when I'm making my sleeve separately. If I'm really making a fitted garment, yeah, I will make a right and left sleeve when I sew. When I knit, it's so easy to make my sleeves different right and left because you don't knit them simultaneously and even if you do there's a point where you can just leave that one set and rest for a bit and make the other one different. I do very carefully mark which one is left <coughs> because yes I have been known to put the left sleeve into the right and the right sleeve into the left and then it's backwards and I rip. As ye sew so shall ye rip. Um, oh, and I will also say, if you're into designing your own knitwear, be prepared to rip your own knitwear and re-knit. Because knit happens. But I've got more knitting to do. I've got time to knit. It's a whole new year. There's a whole lot of good stuff going on. And drat. My cable needle has just come unscrewed. I'm going to have to pick up some stitches. Um, this may call for some blue language, and I don't really want to record that. So I've got some work to do before I can keep knitting, but go keep knitting. It's going to be worth it. It's always worth it in the end.